Welcome into the latest edition of the fastest growing and strongest conservative talk show in the state of South Carolina, the Palmetto Family Matters talk show. Justin Hall here with you with a very special guest. We're here still on the ground at the Vision 24 National Conservative Forum. I'm thinking about renting an Airbnb here in Charleston, but we're glad that you're joining us here on another episode of the show. And joining us is businessman Vivek Ramaswamy. Sir, great to have you join us today. It's good to be here. How are you? I'm doing well. Obviously, an announced presidential candidate is sitting to my right. So we start there. Why run for president? So I just think we're in the middle of this national identity crisis where, if you ask most people our age, really any age in this country right now, what does it mean to be American? You get a blank stare in response. And I think that is the moral vacuum at the heart of our national soul. And as much as I've been complaining over the last several years, I've written Woke Inc. and Nation of Victims, and the rest of the Republican Party and the rest of the pro-American movement complains about the woke agenda. Now we need to actually deliver solutions. And I think the way we do that is by diluting the woke agenda to irrelevance with a vision of American national identity that runs so deep that it actually makes the woke agenda look silly by comparison. And I think we can do that. Sure. And, and you know what? I've lived the full arc of the American dream. My parents came to this country with not a lot of money. I went on to found multi-billion dollar companies. I'm proud of that. But I think that my story, but even if I were born just 20 years later in this country, I don't think my story would have been possible, mm. not in the same way. And so there's something about becoming a father, something about having kids that makes you think about the why. And for me, there was no better way to revive that cultural identity of what it means to be American than to successfully win the presidency. So let's talk about Woke Inc. Let's yep. talk about the ESG situation. We've talked about that on the podcast before. We've talked about it on the show several times. And what we're trying to emphasize here is that this is an effort not necessarily by the federal government directly to, cl to clamp down on religious freedom and, fr and free speech, but they're using corporations to do it. And if you don't have the proper social credit score, let alone a, a good credit score, if you don't have a good social credit score, then you run into where you can't even get a mortgage or a car loan. What, what, is so, what makes it so diabolical that corporations would do this? The thing that makes it so diabolical is that it's completely outside the scope of political accountability. Because the old version of this was big government would be the big threat to liberty and prosperity in the country. But the beauty of big government, at least if the system works the way it's supposed to, is you can vote them out. Sure. But what they realized is, okay, now we can use private companies and capital markets and banks to do through the back door what government itself could never get done through the front door under the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And so you've heard this term, the ESG movement. What sure. are they doing? They're using the money of most Americans, probably most people watching us right now. Mm -hmm to vote for agendas in corporate America's boardrooms, like emissions caps or racial equity audit plans, mm -hmm. that most Americans would say, absolutely not. They would reject that that would be something they want to support. Right. And yet their own money is being used to force corporate America to get it done. And the beauty, if you're one of the perpetrators, the beauty of this is it's not subject to democratic accountability one bit. Right. So that's what makes it so devious and also so difficult to take on. Sure. That being said, I think that's why we need leaders in this country who actually understand those threats today, rather than just reciting slogans we memorized in 1980, saying the big government's the problem. Today, it's only half the story. The right. story and the cancer runs a lot deeper, and we need leaders who understand that. And we go back to how you win elections uh, back in the 80s. It was coined. It's the economy, stupid. Mm -hmm. When it comes to um, where we are right now with inflation where we sit with the rising cost of simply putting food on the table. I'll give you an example. I went to get my oil changed before driving down to Charleston. I usually at this certain establishment paid around $48 for my oil change. It's now $89. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise, me, but doesn't sorry, surprise, yeah, doesn't surprise any of yeah. us, of course. How can we get our nation's economy back on track while still fighting that ESG scheme on the back end? Sure. So here's what I'll say. Both parties, I think, are playing a small ball here. Democrats are saying we need to deal with the deficit through tax increases. Republicans are saying we need to do it through spending cuts. It's almost as though both parties have forgotten the real ingredient, which is GDP growth itself. You know, we used to grow at over 4% per year in this country till the early 1970s. Now it's well under 2%. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a reason why. I think we had a cultural malaise starting in the 70s, the assault on merit in America, the assault on even work, hard work in America, giving people incentives not to work the Great Society, Affirmative Action, the Climate Cult. 
not to mention the policies of the Federal Reserve. These have all contributed to declining GDP growth in our country. One of my reasons for running for president is I think we have deep untapped potential in the American economy itself. And if we can unleash that, get back to three, four plus percent GDP growth, all of our other problems look small by comparison. And I think you have to see an outsider. You have to come in as an outsider to do it. Right. I don't think that you're going to get somebody who's a product of the existing political system, including with the special interests of the donor class, even within the Republican Party is a major problem. I think you're going to need an actual outsider who also understands the economy works, how the economy works, has succeeded in that economy, but also has a vision of the cultural challenges as we face them to actually deliver that, that answer. And as we wrap up our conversation here, we appreciate uh, Vivek joining us at, before he hits the stage here shortly. Um, why South Carolina? Why is it so important for you to be here today for the Vision 24 Forum as you campaign and move forward? So I think that you travel a little bit of this state. You've traveled a good part of the country, actually. And I think that that's something that really makes it it's going to be a key place where we begin to spend a lot more time. I was in Dorchester County earlier today. And one of the things that I wanted to test, this being our first you know, day in campaigning officially in South Carolina. I've been to South Carolina before. Sure. But as a political candidate, this is my first time. I wanted to understand here, I'm not going to change what I say based on where I go, but talking about concepts from energy to independence to independence from China to restoring meritocracy in America to abandoning the demands of this climate cult. These are the things that I'm passionate about that I talk about ending the fentanyl crisis. How does that resonate with South Carolinians? And the answer so far today has been resounding. If I'm convinced of one thing, <laughs> this is going to be a place where we're going to have to spend more time. I'm looking forward to hitting the main <laughs> stage in a little bit. That's awesome. And I'll be listening for the response. I think it's better than just TV where, sure. you know, as many as it's TV hit, you're looking at a camera, right? you don't get a response back. What I love about people in this state is that they're not shy about telling you what they think. We had, even after that first event, I spent longer talking to people one-on-one -on -one afterwards than even I did answering questions from the stage. And so I like going places where people speak openly. Sure. And the thing I'll say, you know, in, in closing with respect to that is our national health, if you want a good measure of our national health, it's the percentage of people who feel free to say what they actually think in public. Mm -hmm. and. My assessment based on the first half of the day here is South Carolinians are, are actually doing pretty well on that metro. We are. So we're going to keep coming back. The road to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue runs through the Palmetto State. Yeah. And I think the man sitting to my right understands that very well after today. Mr. Ramaswamy, appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. On the show and on the Vision 24 National Conservative Forum. Thanks so much for watching the fastest growing and strongest conservative talk show in South Carolina, the Palmetto Family Matters Show.